Good afternoon everyone, Tractor Man 44 here. I think this is part four, but I'm gonna go down to my son's. I've got some duck work I made a couple days ago up in the attic. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set that in place, attach it to our horizontal hanging air handler, and uh, get ready to get a little further measurements where I can make a little bit more uh, before the weather changes too bad. Now if you look at this, um, this plenum tee, or pair of pants, Bear in mind this is going to be a horizontal discharge, so it's going to actually lay down like this. And the one trunk line goes this way, the other trunk line goes this way. So going from the 13 by 13 to our trunk line is going to increase that velocity again, but it should increase it to the predetermined amount that we decided we want to have in each of the two trunk lines. So whenever you do that, we have to convert this square dimension to a rectangle horizontal dimension. Now take a look at this. We have a 13 by 13 entering and we're leaving 13 by 13 both directions. That's going to be the, the fan discharge and also the main duct branch. So what we're going to do then is we're going to convert that 13 by 13 square right here going to the, lar to the large end of the system by making a two-way transition. It tapers down this way if you look at it level like this you see it tapers this direction from 13 down to 8 and this direction from 13 up to 16. So we have a 8 by 16 on one end, 13 by 13 on the other end with one side straight because I want to drop the elevation to get closer to the rafters but I'm going to come in conflict with some plumbing pipes so I need to keep this straight so we have to minimize the amount of offset we're going to have to make in, in the, possibly in the next fitting to go around those plumbing fixtures or plumbing lines. Uh, so we drop down and swing everything this direction with the back side maintaining the same plane as the rear of, the, uh, of the, the pair of pants. So to make that long story short, if this thing is laying down horizontally, we come in here like this. Of course this is, gets a, an S joint and this is a drive joint, but you can see how that's going to attach right there. Now what we've done, we've succeeded in bringing that air into here and we're going to pinch it down to the, the dim dimension required to move the cubic feet of air per minute that's going to go to the large trunk line. And this fitting is going to do that. The next step we have to do is do exactly the same thing except we're going to pinch it down to a smaller, to a smaller uh, dimension because we require much less air to that end of the hall. And if this was a commercial job, or a higher capacity residential job, we would also put turning vanes inside here to the aid. The turning vanes is just a series of little corners that kind of knifes into the airflow and allows it to go around the corner much quicker. We would install a set of turning vanes to facilitate that, but this is just a small two-ton system, 800 CFM total, so that's not going to be required. Well, here we are in the attic. We've got the, um, the horizontal air handler hung. We've got return air tied in, complete with return air filter grill through the space. We've got the uh, discharge main, uh, the main discharge plenum on the unit with a predetermined sizing of a uh, pair of pants or a V to direct a smaller portion of air to the uh, smaller end of the system, which will immediately transition down uh, to a eight by nine duct to carry that small quantity to the two registers down there, as well as changing the dimension from 13 by 13 over here to 8 by 16 to take the remaining portion of the air the full distance to the other end of the house to pick up all the rest of the registers. I believe five registers are going to come off of that end and two off of the opposite end. We may add an additional third one in a common area uh, but I don't really want to do that unless we have to to get rid of a little air simply because it'll be too close in proximity of the return air filter grill and a lot of that cool air or heated air would just short cycle right back up the return. Well, we're back in the shop after getting that plenum and that uh, first section coming off of that horizontal air handler. I uh, was able to get the measurements for the rest of the duct network up on that second floor. Again, it's a small system, not very big duct, but I'm going to show you just a quick way of making uh, or duplicating the measurements on, on duct of any size, actually, if you're going to make a whole bunch of them. A lot of times you might have to run 16, 18, 20, whatever sections of the same size duct. And this will really help you laying out. You don't have to measure everything. 
So uh, let me show you what uh, what I got going on. Now the one edge of the duct, you have to have a um, one inch allowance to go through the lock farming machine. So um, what I've got is just a, I know I showed you all this before, it's a piece of stainless steel. Uh, it, it, it'll hold a real nice sharp point. You know, what I've done years and years ago is I made this uh, this here with a quarter, uh, a one inch, a three quarter, three eighths, quarter and a half inch notch on them. Uh, so to make it where it's real quick and easy to lay out those tabs, so to speak, uh, without having to do any measuring. But at any rate, we need to allow one inch on the one side of the duct for the lock farmer. And then for the quarter inch to uh, be locked into the lock farmer, you have to have a quarter inch on the other side. And then if you're making eight inch by this particular case, eight inch by 10 inch duct, I think it is, you want to allow nine inches in from the outside edge because one inch is going to be used up by the lock farmer. So you need one plus eight is nine inches. So you'll, you'll want to mark a nine inch notch. So remember, uh, instead of using a set of trammel points, we got a little board with a convenient um, series of holes in them, you know, uh, with the majority of the, the heights that you're going to be using. Uh, we start off with uh, eight, eight inch, uh, nine inch, 10 inch, etc., etc., etc. And whenever you hook this, this here, which is a makeshift trammel point, it's actually a pop rivet sharpened down nice and sharp. You hook that on the edge of the duct and then just kind of rotate this on your one inch mark and this particular one here is on the nine inch level because nine inch will give us eight inch duct. Uh, you see what I mean? Then we can trim that out. We'll fabricate eight inch, eight inch height duct. So those are the, the things we're going to use to make this layout It'll go a little quicker. Start off with the one inch on the far side. We want our notches to be one inch deep. So we lay the one inch all the way across. Then we need our quarter inch on the opposing edge. Now we need our nine inch on the one inch mark. So we hook this over the edge. Give us a slight arc. Without measuring, we have nine inches marked on every one of them now. Now we'll invert this stack of duct and do exactly the same thing over there in reverse. And then we're ready to notch and run through the lock farmer and fold. Well, we got both ends marked, so it's time to notch them. About the most you want to stack up is about uh, six or eight sheets. It gets a little more difficult uh, if you get anywhere near 10 or 12. They get a little floppy and still a little more difficult to keep track of. Invert it, notch the other end, ready to run through the machines. Now we've talked about this Pittsburgh Lock Farmer, um, or Lock Farmer Pittsburgh machine before. Uh, it's got a series of five uh, rollers in there that, uh, that, that through the series of their shapes convert it from flat metal to that uh, one inch Pittsburgh lock. And uh, whenever we go assembling, uh, that electric hammer that you see there, that thing's exceptionally noisy. Uh, I don't really like to, to use it without earplugs. It's quite deafening. But you can see by the finished, uh, the finished product uh, how much more superior it is you know, to, uh, to, to finishing the joint than it is beating the door with a hammer. Beating over with a hammer is fine. I've done thousands of them, but it's just a whole lot easier on your wrist to pull the trigger and use that electric tool. Anyway, that's far enough for part four. I know it's a little boring to you unless you're actually interested in, uh, in sheet metal work. But you know the thing about it, if you have the ability to make some of this sheet metal, you'd be surprised how many other things you can do with your tools and machinery and the little basic knowledge that you have about sheet metal to build stuff for your tractors, to build stuff for your your hot rod cars or your old restoration projects, um, you know, like fender patches and things like that, uh, all kinds of, just all kinds of crazy things. Uh, gas tanks for make and break engines, for instance, uh, just, just things like that. It's just impossible to list the things that it opens you up to, uh, to be able to do. But at any rate, this is the, uh, the end of part four. Part five, we're going to pick up by going the other direction with another transition and then probably laying out straight ducks. Um, or maybe even taking this back down, poking up in the attic and getting it installed. So I think you could tell by all the hammer noise that we pretty much beat this one to death. So it's Tractor Man 44. And for now, I am out of here.